guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at a super gun released recently by a company called Retro Electronic in France. This review is basically going to be for retro gamers already familiar with upscalers and with the SCART video format that maybe want to get into playing legitimate arcade PCBs or JAMA PCBs or maybe get into collecting JAMA PCBs but don't have the room for a full-size arcade cabinet. This super gun will allow you to play these games on your regular TV set. Uh, this is going to be a pretty in-depth review. This is kind of a heavy hitter, not really for novices. Because of that, because of the length of this review, I'm going to put timestamps in the description below. So you guys can just skip ahead to whatever you want to see. If you don't feel like watching the whole video, you can just fast forward to the parts that interest you. Um, also, at the end of the video, I'm going to have different explanations of setups that you could do with this thing. How to do video besides SCART. How you can convert it to VGA, for example. I'm going to show it running using Pandora's box. And of course, we'll show it with standard JAMA. So it's going to be a fun review. It's an excellent product. Thank you guys for tuning in. So enjoy the review. Okay, today we're going to take a look at the Retro Electronic Arcade Super Gun Pro Gamer System version 1.3. The general concept is that you use this to play arcade games on your standard TV set rather than in an arcade cabinet. So this kind of condenses all your arcade machine functions into one board. There is a lot going on with this board. So I want to go through everything with you step by step and I'm going to explain how this thing works, all the options, all the features, and how friggin' cool this thing really is. Let's start with the front. We have a standard JAMA connector here that you could either plug your PCB directly into or you can use an extender harness if you don't want it to be butted right up against it. If you look over here, this J1 option has a click button here. You can see in or out. Here's a quick explanation. If the button is out, it's standard JAMA and MVS, Neo Geo. If the button is in, it is six button JAMA, such as the Blue Elf, etc. Also the Pandora box. But when you're dealing with JAMA arcade PCBs, the normal JAMA standard is only three action buttons. Button one, two, and three. Buttons four, five, and six normally have to get wired through what's called a kick harness. Now, in contrast, a Pandora's box or a uh, Blue Elf, they changed up the standard. They do not use a JAMA standard. They use like what they call a CHAMA standard. I think that's the slang term for it, which is basically the Chinese JAMA standard. And what they did was they found a way to set it up so that you could get all six buttons right off of the edge connector rather than needing a kick harness. When you click this button in or out, you're basically telling it whether you're running a standard JAMA PCB or CHAMA PCB. Accordingly, that will route the pinout to your terminal block over here. So let's talk a little bit about that. When you plug your JAMA PCB in here, all the inputs are routed to this ter terminal block and also to your DB15 over here. And it's basically your choice how you want to do this. If you want to use a Neo Geo controller and just plug it in, you can go right ahead and do that. Um, but mind you, it'll only accept buttons 1 through 4 because Neo Geo only has buttons 1 through 4. Technically, you could get button 5 as the select button if you wanted to trick it. If you wanted to play Street Fighter with five buttons, you could trick it and hit the select button for medium kick. It's a little tech tip. Also, you can see what I did here for playing Neo Geo. On the terminal blocks up here, you have uh, coin one and two. And I jumpered that over to 
button five, which is the select button on the Neo Geo. So right now, when I hit select on my Neo Geo controller, it'll insert a coin also. And that's a Neo Geo single slot I'm talking about right now. We're gonna come to the multi-slot in a second, bear with me. So moving along, another feature that this has is right here, an auto fire feature. And again, with simple click buttons in or out, you could turn your auto fire on or off. And the way you activate this is, once you turn it on, hit whichever button you want to be auto fire. So say you hold down button one and then the start button at the same time, and that will lock in auto fire for button one. So it's pretty neat that they have an auto fire button that you can actually pick which button you want to use with. Pretty awesome. Let's talk about the power. There's two ways you can power this thing. One is with a standard PC power supply, either a, a 20 pin power supply or a 20 plus four, either or will work and it plugs right in. I actually did pick up a power supply for this. I specifically chose this power supply, the Corsair CX650M. The reason I like this one is not only does it have its own power, power switch, which I thought was cool, but also it is a semi-modular power supply, meaning that I don't have a million cables coming out of this. I knew that I was only gonna need this, this 2024 pin for the power. So I love that basically the, the only thing coming out of this is that there's, there's one other power adapter that does come out that I kind of just zip tied out of the way. Kind of just a clean look. Everything is kind of uh, compact. You can also use a standard arcade power supply and wire it right into the terminal block. With the regular arcade power supply, what's nice is that you could raise and lower the voltage accordingly, um, as I found that using a JAMA extender cable, you can, lose, you can have some voltage drop because of now the distance. And unfortunately, with my PC power supply over here, you know, there's no way to adjust or make up the difference for that lost power. These two connections are wired in parallel, so it could go either way. And what's really cool is if you power it using the PC Molex connector, you can actually steal power off of these terminals to power something else. So for example, I have a RGB to VGA converter. So that converter needs five volts of power. So I could steal five volts of power, just run a wire from this terminal block to that other converter board and power it using this. Another cool feature is that this has the ability to generate its own minus five volts. Most modern PC power supplies do not output minus five volts that are needed for some older JAMA games. There's a little switch right here. I don't know if I could bring it in if you could see it, but there's a little switch right here and you could see, set the switch to either setting one or two. Setting one is auto generated and setting two is from the power supply. So if you have an older power supply that does generate minus five volts, you would set it to setting two, which means you're taking minus five from the power supply. And if you have a newer power supply, like the one that I have over here, that does not put out minus five, you flip the switch to the one setting over here, and it will auto generate its own minus five volts. That is pretty cool. Moving along, here's a power switch for the board. If you wanted to turn it on and off from here, you can. I don't really use that because my power supply has its own switch right here, so I just leave it on. Um, remote on, I believe this is if you wanted to just wire in uh, an on and off switch remotely. I believe that's what it's for. So you would just wire right into this terminal block. So if you wanted to, you can use this to, to run a standard arcade cabinet. You could wire your buttons directly from here to a control panel. Also your kick harness, if you wanted to, you could wire directly into buttons four, five, and six for player two and player one. So if you wanted to wire your kick harness directly into the screw terminal block, you can do that. 
The term kick harness comes from the game Street Fighter 2, where all your kick buttons are wired to buttons 4, 5, and 6, which use an additional harness on the Street Fighter 2 PCB board to output those buttons. Another awesome feature talking about the kick harness is that they have a DB9 port over here, and this is wired in parallel with buttons four, five, and six over here. So if you wanted, instead of having to screw in your kick harness for each game each time, if you wanted to, you could just take your kick harness and then take like a DB9 connector, like I have one over here, you can wire your kick harness into this and it's just plug and play for each game. And again, you don't have to do that. You can just wire it into the terminal block over here. Once you have your kick harness hooked up, whether it's through the DB9 or through this terminal block, it will output to certain pins on your DB15. So you can either create your own control panel with all six buttons. Uh, you can use your Neo Geo joysticks. They will plug directly in, but you'll only have, you won't have all six buttons available. Or Retro Electronic also produces these converters. So this one is like a DB15 to SNES adapter. And this would allow you to use a standard Super Nintendo controller. And if you have your kick harness wired up, it'll output to the Super Nintendo controller. So you can use all six buttons needed on a Super Nintendo controller. They also make one of these that outputs for a Genesis. And you would just plug it in like that. And then you would plug your Super Nintendo controller into there. So if you wanna go really simplistic, and you don't want to worry about having to build a control panel or dig up a Neo Geo stick. You can hook directly up to your SNES controller or Sega Genesis. Moving along. This little screen here will give you a voltage readout. So you can actually see what your power supply is putting out. And you could make a choice with this switch right over here if you want it to display what the five volt reading is or what the 12 volt reading is. And it'll display those accordingly on your little display screen. Obviously it's not lit up right now, you need to power it. But that is awesome that you can actually, actually see in real time what kind of voltage you're getting out of your power supply. I love that. Here's your video terminal block. Now this, this will send out just a standard red, green, blue, ground and sync, just like your regular arcade machine. So if you wanted to plug a regular standard arcade monitor into this, you absolutely can. You can wire it right into here. And then you have this pot right here, the sync adjustment pot. So if you plug into a regular arcade monitor and you have sync issues, you would adjust this pot and that would straighten it out. Genius. I mean, I love this thing. You have over here your blue, green, and red color adjustments. Now, this is important, and I'm happy to talk about it because I know in the news there's been a lot of talk about certain super guns that have blown out OSSCs. And I actually emailed the manufacturer, Retro Electronic, about that and I had questions for him. And he explained to me through his testing, if you leave these in the neutral position, meaning you leave the adjustment knobs right in the middle, like you see them now, they have found that that is a perfect adjustment for regular TV set. He said, you have no need to worry that this is gonna blow anything out. He said, if you are worried, you could turn these potentiometers up to maximum resistance so that you'll get almost a black screen when you first plug this into your TV, and then slowly dial up each adjustment accordingly until you get a nice picture. That way you don't risk sending too much voltage through and frying something. So you really have the best of both worlds. I have left mine in the uh, default setting that they came, which is uh, the pots right in the middle of the dial setting. And I have not had an issue and the picture has been great. But if you want to be on the safe side, you can start at like zero black screen and just dial them in slowly to make sure that you're not going to short anything out. Video out. So this defaults to SCART. 
skirt out and it can also handle your audio it can do mono and stereo via the skirt connection so you can either you can either take your audio from there or you can take your audio from the rca de depending on whatever your preference is it, it can go either way uh, but it does default to skirt so in my case i have been plugging this into my frame meister and have had beautiful beautiful results i mean it's just like hooking up my regular aes when i play some neo geo on this so with the skirt you know you either have to go through an upscaler either the ossc the frame meister or if you have a crt that can accept a skirt connection you can use that and the only other output like i said for video is if you had some type of converter you can you can grab uh the the red green blue ground and sync from here you can steal power from here and send that to a converter board and convert it to to whatever you want to do you know i know there's hdmi converters out there i have a vga converter rgb to vga like we spoke about earlier so built in you can only come out with scart but you do have the ability to hook a converter board up to this if you need to output to anything else so let's continue along. They have a big credit button built in, a credit button for player two, a test button, and a service button. And these are wired in parallel with this terminal block right here. So like I was talking about before with the credits, rather than me having to come up to the board and actually click these buttons to add a credit, I just simply wired a jumper from the terminal here to button five, which I said equals the select button on a Neo Geo controller. So if I hit the select button, boom, I'm inserting a credit. But you can also come up and just hit these buttons. You can wire, a, if, you, if you're putting this in a regular arcade cabinet, you can wire up a test and a service button directly from the, the terminal block to a standard button. If you wanted to go about that, you can have at it. Let's talk about audio. There's a lot of different options for audio. So you have amplified and unamplified audio coming from this. The terminal block right here is wired in parallel with your speaker. This is amplified audio. So you could technically wire two speakers directly to this and control the volume with, if you had like a volume knob or a pot on your JAMA PCB. Also, your headphone jack over here, this is in parallel. Your headphone jack is also amplified. So you have to be careful, guys. You can't hook these into some kind of an audio amplifier. These would go like straight to just speakers. So you have standard audio out, like if you were hooking up to a regular arcade cabinet. But what's awesome is that you have unamplified audio out or line level audio out you could see these little transformers here he uses to take the amplified audio and i guess drop it to line level and that is so freaking cool so if you want to go to say you're hooking this to your tv set like you're supposed to if you come out with either the rca jacks or the speaker jack over here that is unamplified so you have no fear of blowing out your tv speakers or your home surround sound system speakers if you output with these now the audio switch here for stereo and mono serves a couple purposes if you're playing a mono jamma pcb all it'll do is split the audio, the mono signal, it'll split it to, to the two different speakers. Um, now by splitting it, you may get audio out of both speakers, but keep in mind, it's going to cut your volume level in half. So you're really gonna have to jack up your speakers if you do that. If you keep it in mono, it'll only output to one of the RCA jacks. I'm keeping it in mono, it'll be much louder. Now the stereo mono button also 
is for use with a multi-slot Neo Geo. The multi-slot Neo Geo is not your standard JAMA pinout. There's a, there's a couple differences. One is the way the audio is handled, and the other is that there's a select button to cycle through the different games you have in different slots. Now, to my knowledge, I don't have this confirmed, but I tried doing some continuity tests with the, the pin for the select button, and I can't find any continuity, so I do not think there is a way to change the game. I don't think you can cycle through different slots, unfortunately. Now, I might be wrong about that, but to my knowledge, I don't think you're going to be able to cycle through. I think you're only going to be able to play like the default slot, which I assume is probably slot one. But what I can tell you is that by hitting the stereo button over here, you will reroute the wiring properly so you can safely use your Neo Geo multi-slot JAMA board with this and get stereo out, true stereo out. And I think that about covers it, guys. I just wanted to give you guys a really in-depth look and go into all the fine details about this super gun. And this thing is amazing. I mean, I, I can't say enough good things about it. And I had been in contact with Retro Electronic. I had been emailing back and forth with them questions and concerns. I just really wanted to clear everything up um, before I committed to this. These are a phenomenal price if you can get it. You can get a kit from these guys. They'll sell it with either a Genesis or Super Nintendo adapter for your controller. They'll sell it with a power supply. I would just drop them a note. Hey, I live in America. Can you make sure that it's a 60 hertz, 110 volt power supply? Um, and also they will sell it with some spare controllers. They throw in some... Uh, just some cheap Super Nintendo controllers that you can use. And I think I paid like 120 bucks for everything. Uh, you can't beat it. I think by itself, this thing is only like 65 bucks, somewhere, somewhere around there. So really cool Super Gun. It does a beautiful, beautiful job. And I wanted to spend some time and just do a little review on it. So... Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Okay, so here it is in action, guys. I just wanted to show it to you. Here's the super gun. You can see the readout, the voltage lights. We're hooked up to a single slot in Neo Geo. Here's the power supply, and we just finished flashing the game, let's see what happens. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Got a little pole star up there. Running on the super gun. So you can see we're coming out with SCART. Here's my power supply, which is plugged in right over here. And then we are coming in to the Frame Meister. For audio, I am coming out to the speaker, unamplified speaker jack, 3.5 millimeter speaker jack. That converts the RCA cables into Frame Meister. You could also output your sound via the SCAR cable if you wanted to, either or. And you can see I'm plugged in over here with my pad. And I have uh, an extender just to get extra length. And I just wanted to show what you guys running. Guys, I just wanted to make a note. The only difference settings wise that I see between the AES and using the MVS with the Frame Meister is the vertical width setting. I believe it normally defaults to 32. You're gonna wanna set it to 33 if you're using scan lines, otherwise the scan lines come out a little screwed up. So just a little 
little tech tip. Another example of the super gun, and we are playing a little Soul Edge, which is the original Soul Calibur game that not many people seem to know about. We got it plugged into the super gun, and we are using the kick harness plugged in to the DB9 port to get our fourth button, which is the block button in this game. So I just wanted to show you guys quick example here. We're playing with Neo Geo controllers. There's the Panooch. And I'll tell you, it looks really phenomenal. Playing with the Frame Meister with the scan lines turned on 720p. We have it stretched out to uh, 16.9. And just a uh, quick example. Into the Frame Meister. Alright, guys, so I just wanted to demonstrate another way that you can hook up the super gun. So I have Mortal Kombat on the bench here running and you can see that I have it hooked up to the super gun. We got a Neo Geo controller plugged in. I don't have the kick harness hooked up currently, but that's okay. So in this one, you can see that instead of hooking up to the SCART connection, we're actually using the arcade red, green, blue, ground, and sync wires that would normally go to your arcade monitor. We're using these wires, which is tied into the video terminal block right there. And we are feeding this converter I have here, which is a arcade monitor to VGA converter and I have the VGA plugged into the back of my little flat screen up here, just running some Mortal Kombat. I haven't uh, adjusted the colors, so they're a little off right now, but I just wanted to show that you can hook this up. There are other options. If you don't wanna hook up with the SCART connection over here, you don't have to. You could also opt to plug this directly into a real arcade monitor. So pretty cool great options. You can also see that I, I hooked up a speaker directly. This is simulating if you were running, you know, if you wanted to run this super gun in a real arcade cabinet, you could just hook it directly up to your speakers for the sound instead of outputting with either the headphone jacks or the RCA outs. There are unlimited options with this board. I mean, it's super cool how everything works. And you can see right here that I actually am stealing power right over here. I can show you. I'm stealing power right here from the power supply to power up this little converter board. So it all ties together. And here's MK1 with the soundboard running with the super gun. Here's the power supply. And if you wanted to hook up your kick harness, you would tie right into here and you would bring your connections over to here. You could tie them right in. So if you just had regular wires, you would bring them over and tie it in to you know, button one, player one, button four, five, six, just like that. So there are many, many possibilities with this board. Just wanted to show the super gun in action with the Pandora's box. And just as a side note, I do have the audio coming out from the super gun. However, a lot of JAMA PCBs, you know, output their own stereo audio uh, via RCA cables. So you can go directly from a JAMA PCB directly into your you know, mixer, whatever that may be for your audio. 
like in this case, the uh, Pandora's box, you can't really see it, but on the other side, it actually does have its own 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So if I wanted to, I could plug the audio cable directly into the Pandora's box instead of going through the super gun. So that's just an option. So just wanted to show it in action, the different features. They also make a uh, Sega Genesis adapters. So you could go from DB15 to Sega. If you wanted to do that, that's an option. And uh, that's pretty much the setup right here. I just wanted to show it to you guys with Pandora's box and with that button clicked in. So it reroutes, reroutes the all six buttons to the JAMA Edge connector. All right, guys. So you can see we're playing with the SNES controller. It has an extremely weird button layout. So weak punch is B, medium punch is A, fierce punch is Y, weak kick will be X, medium kick will be L, and fierce kick will be R. So it's a funky button layout using this. Last thing I wanted to show you guys. So right now we're rocking the Pandora's box four. And I just wanted to show you, we are actually wireless right now with the 8-bit dough, the, uh, what is it, the SN30. So just wanted to show, I got the receiver plugged in to the SNES adapter. <laughs> And it works. Let's see if I can get you some footage here. Just to show. So you can potentially go wireless with your super gun if need be. So. Pretty cool guys, that's my setup. <laughs> See you guys next time.